Oh, landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess. And uh, while I was hiding out at Randy's house, I out pizzaed the hut again. Um, I can't stop myself. I have a problem. It just keeps happening. They have my family now. They haven't submitted a ransom note, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to borrow five bucks from you guys. Uh, and uh, my kids are going to find out which one's my favorite. You know, my day started off with no milk for the cereal, and it's just kind of gone downhill from there. But while we're waiting for the ransom note, let's take a look at eh, the Gerber Quadrant. So uh, this thing came in way back when I was just doing YouTube shorts. Um, didn't have the overhead set up for the camera yet, and didn't really have the confidence it comes with doing this for a while. And out of the box, it had some pretty severe problems. But let's take a look at what we got. So first things first, the pocket clip is tip up, which is the Lord's carry. And uh, you've got a frame lock and you got a flipper tab here. Let's flick the bean. Eh. And you've got kind of a straight razor style blade. And uh, the problems out of the box were kind of unforgivable. So the, the action on this right here, the, the pivot was ridiculously tight. I mean, like, there was no justification for it whatsoever. You know, I could slam on this flipper tab as hard as I could, and it might open about that far. If you moved it manually, you could hear it squeak. Um, it is on bronze washers, and they really over-tightened the crap out of it. <clears throat> um, so, at, at some point, I finally broke down. I'm like, I'm going to try to make this thing decent. So, I went in and stripped out a couple of uh, Torx heads trying to get this loosened up. Um, they apparently Loctited this stuff down to the point where you can't loosen it. So, let's flick the bean again. Eh. I went in and did the thing I didn't want to. I took the, uh, I took the frame lock right here and bent it out and kept bending it out until it relaxed enough to let it open and close. Now, where it is now with the, uh, weird detent, I can still slam on this as hard as I want. Eh. And that's about as far as it goes. You throw a little wrist in it, it's fine. Um, and I always throw wrist into a flick when I'm doing that anyways, just to make me feel better about myself. Um, the next thing that was a problem was the factory edge. Complete garbage. Um, I tried cutting paracord with it, and I might as well have been using a dull pair of children's scissors. Um, I really had to saw at it to cut through, and it left a very ragged edge, which should not have happened from the factory. The next thing that happened, and I'm not sure how well it'll show here, but at the top of the bevel, it is wavy as hail. Like, this thing must have been, like, at 5.15 in the afternoon on a Friday, and the quality control guy had left to deal with his wife cheating on him with another man. Um, <clears throat> it was terrible. So, I got the action moving again, and then I took it over to the Workshop Precision Adjust and did some work on it, and I sharpened it around 22 degrees. So that was one of the first things I tried sharpening with it, and I was trying to get my uh, angles dialed in, and... I sharpened it, and I didn't know what angle to sharpen at, so I thought that would be a safe angle. It still cuts like you're using a hatchet, um, you know, and afterwards I went online and I, you know, I asked some questions, and guys were posting anywhere from 17 to 20 degrees on average. Um, I found my happy place is 18 degrees, but this didn't get that. So um, I can't do, like, a fair, fair review. You know, out of the box, absolutely terrible marks across the board. Um, but we were talking about it in a live stream or something like that. And someone was asking about carrying it and all that. And if I did a review and I was like, you know what? I haven't. So I carried it for a week. Um, I didn't touch the edge up or do anything else to it. And, uh, you know, let's take a look at how sharp it is on a 22 degree angle. So let's get into this here. So the edge is still okay. You know, it's not cutting like I want it to, but it cuts. You know, it's a pretty ragged edge. This is kind of like what you get after about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours of Cardboard Slayer on 8CR. So the edge is serviceable. However, you know, cutting plastic off of pallets, even the layers in the middle where they're the easiest as possible to cut, this thing was still hanging up and dragging real bad. Um, and that is the angle I sharpened it at. But that's still significantly better than the factory edge. I mean significantly. Um... I will say in its defense, um, as flat as it is right here, it carried very comfortably in the waistband. It rode quite nicely. And the pocket clip is put together really well. Um, this thing really clipped in easily on the waistband, and it pulled back out of the waistband really well, and it stayed put. Um, you know, it didn't go anywhere. However, 
that's where the good things really kind of stop. Um, you can see here, it's on the blade, but this is leftovers from cutting a very, very tough piece of cardboard. Um, I had to break down the box for a display at work. And oh, sweet baby Jesus. So I had to lean into this thing as hard as I possibly could to get those cuts made. And I mean really, really pushing. And the ergos on this for heavy cuts are terrible. This thing started to hurt in no time flat, you know, and it's not designed for hard use. It's not designed for doing stuff like that. Um, it'll do in a pinch, but, you know, this is definitely not geared for doing stuff like that. You know, it is designed to be flat. It's designed, to, I'm assuming, to be easy to carry, but whew, that was a rough experience. And I had to make a lot of those cuts to get that thing broken down enough to fit in the baler. So, uh, you know, that's, it really doesn't serve any purpose for anything like if you've got it for popping open boxes sure if you've got it for making small cuts sure but for carrying it as a serious edc piece nah nah like this isn't even one i'd necessarily want to throw in a toolbox now that i know what heavy cuts do to my hand like it was so uncomfortable um you know, and I bought this because I thought, you know, the, the black and the white looked good together. It looked like a really cool design, really cool profile, you know, and this is a blade shape that I do like. You know, I like the shape of the blade. I just wish this whole thing would have been better executed. And I don't remember what I paid for it, but it was too much. I think it was around 30 or 35 bucks. Uh-uh, no. I would be upset with this at 10 bucks. Um, it just, it was so terrible. I can't even remember the blade steel on it now. Like I didn't look before I started the video, even though I should have, but it's just, this, the thing did so bad at everything. And if I sat there and reprofiled it again at 18 degrees, it would cut very nicely and it would do that quite well. However, I don't plan on carrying this again or doing anything with it. It's going to go in the pile and it is going to become forgotten. Um, this, this thing should be shunned, and nothing should ever grow on the ground upon which it sits. I just, dear God, man. Like, and, and I know, like, Gerber's been catching a lot of flack for QC issues and stuff like that. And this would be exactly why they've been catching that kind of flack. Um, you know, and I haven't had any of Gerber's nicer, more expensive stuff. Um, so I don't know what to compare that to for Gerber as a brand as a whole. Um, you know, and I do have that soft spot just because, you know, when I was a kid growing up, my uncle, who was the guy that got me into knives, um, he just would constantly talk about how good Gerber knives were. And, uh, you know, it just, the name stuck with me once I figured out that it was knives and not baby food. Like it took me about 10 minutes of conversation before I realized he was not talking about baby food. And I was much less confused once I figured out what was happening. So, you know, like when I started buying knives again, I picked up some paraframes. It's like Gerber, cool. And he had a paraframe in the stuff that I got from him that was just in pieces that I had to fix. And I went about that in the dumbest way possible. But, you know, the paraframe, I haven't really carried enough to develop a firm opinion on it. However, there is a paraframe in the box for the live streams. So at some point, we'll find out what those ergos do to my hand after a few hours of slaying cardboard. Um, but... Yeah, like if you're looking at this thing and it looks cool, pass on it, you know, and I've, I've talked to a few guys that have these, it's the exact same thing. I bought it because it looked cool and oh boy, it was trash out of the box. And it's been the same thing every time. It's been that really tight pivot, the, the grind, the, the grind here has been wavy on every single one. The edge hasn't been good. Like this is a consistent issue with these things. It's not like I just got a bad one, uh, you know, uh, an isolated case. So you know, it, it looks cool, but you find something better than this. Um, you know, like I'd love, I'd love to say this thing was great. I'd love to say it did good, but there's nothing redeeming about it outside of it carries comfortably. Like if you need something flat that looks a little dressy, this might pass for you, but no. Um, you know, I'm really disappointed by it at the price, at the money I spent for it, but you know, and, and I should have sent it back the second the pivot didn't start opening, but my brain doesn't function like that. I don't think, I don't like to send it back. It's, I bought it. I'm a goblin. It must never leave my hands. So yeah, I mean, that's my experience with this thing. I know it's not a full partial or it's not a full review on it because I had to work on this thing out of the box, but that's been my experience carrying this thing. And I thought I'd share it with you. Um, and this got the full week of carry and put through the ringer. Um, so all that being said, it is May. We are collecting money for Make-A-Wish Georgia. I'm going to have a link in the description. 
Um, that money goes straight to make a wish. It doesn't enter my hands or, or anything. It's just we're trying to raise a few bucks. And if you guys could help, that would be amazing. We're trying to smash uh, last year's uh, last year's numbers. Um, the guy that's doing this, we uh, together we cleared 5000 And he's made enough to grant three wishes so far after a few years of doing this. So I'd love to help him out. Um, again, link will be in the description for that if you so desire. Uh, a couple of bucks helps. But uh, yeah, all that being said... Thanks for looking at my crap. Subscribers, you guys are awesome. Um, I can't thank you enough for getting us over a 1,000, and it's still climbing slowly but surely. Um, also, live stream coming up uh, Monday night, I believe, and we have a special treat. Um, it's not going to be the one, the 20-sided die picks. I've got one lined up for it, so show up and see what we got. And all that being said, y'all have a nice day.